Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another C Sharp tutorial to begin A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with validating a credit card or debit card number. So we're going to be so we're going to be using the Loon algorithm, which essentially we start from the right and we double each other digit. If a digit we double is greater than nine, we mod it by ten and then add one to the remainder. Then we add up every digit. If that total is a multiple of 10, it is valid. Otherwise, it's invalid. This is a simple, simple way of explaining how it's done, and we're going to go right into how we program it. If you want a more detailed explanation, be sure to click the I up in the corner. I did a Java tutorial where I go a bit more in depth into how it works. So let's get right into it. So we've got a function here called static, it's a static boolean, it's called validate card number, and it takes a string as an input. The first thing we've got to do is convert that string into an integer array. So what we do is we create the integer array, you could use an array list if you want to, but I'm using an array. So we've got an integer card int equals new int, and the length of this array is going to be the length of the string, so it can store the right amount of characters. Then we've got a for loop, for int i equals zero, i less than input dot length, and i plus plus, and we're going to do card int i, so we're going to loop through this whole array and modify each element of the array, equals int in brackets, so we're going to cast what, whatever is after this to an integer, input i minus zero in the character, and that's a quick way to convert our, our character to an integer. After that, we're going to start from the right and double each other digit. If greater than nine, mod 10 and plus one to the remainder. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna do this in a slightly creative way. We're gonna do a for loop, but i is gonna equal the card length minus two. So we're not going to start at the start of the, the array we're looping through. We're going to start near the end, which you probably haven't seen often. So that's what we're going to do here. Then we're going to do i is greater than or equal to zero, and i equals i minus two. So we're going to loop back, backwards through this array, but we're going to skip every other character, because that's the requirement we double each other digit. So let me do int temp value equals card int i. So we're getting a temp value, which is going to store the current number of the credit cards we're going to be looking at. Then we do temp value equals temp value times two. So we're multiplying that value by two. Then we do if temp value is greater than nine, as we said here, if it's greater, but greater than nine, we mod by 10 and then plus one to the remainder. So we do temp value equals temp value percentage sign, which is the equivalent of how we would type mod in a pro most programming languages. So we mod by 10 and then we plus one. Then we do card int i equals temp value. So we're just saving this temp value now to the array. And we do this for the whole credit card number. After that, we need to add all digits. So we do int total equals zero. Then we literally loop through the whole array We're using a for loop and total plus equals the current element of the credit card number array we're looking at. After that, we're going to do the final step to validating the card number. If the number is a multiple of 10, it is valid. So we do if total mod 10 equals zero, implying we're going to check if there's a remainder or not. If there's no remainder, that means the number is a multiple of 10, because there's no nothing left over, implying 10 goes into this number perfectly. If there is a remainder, then this won't be equal to zero, and as a result, it won't be valid. So we return true here, after we return a false, implying that the remainder isn't zero, implying there is a remainder. So that's how we actually go about validating, but let's test it out. So I've got a few card numbers from a website which allows us to help test our validation of card numbers. Right, so now that we've got this done, we're actually going to test it. So we're going to put in our first number. And I wasn't expecting that to happen, I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know why it went to a different line there. So we're going to click play. And it returns a true. 
So I actually got this number from a website where it just gives you some test credit card account numbers, which we can use. So I'm not going to use my actual debit card. I don't, I don't want to um be be robbed. Yeah. So that returns are true. We're going to take another one from this list. Again, it's going on to a new page. Uh, I'm, uh, right. We've got another one there. Let's test it. Returns true. Uh, let's go for something which... Let's just type some random numbers in and see if that's valid. There you go. There's some numbers. Let's see if that works. Returns are false because it's literally just me typing random numbers. Anyway, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. This should actually work in languages like C or C++, as we're not really using any functions exclusive to C Sharp. So if you... Because I know with my Java one, some people wanted help with it in a different language, like in C or C++. This should basically work, except for maybe, you know, the static Boolean. And this main function might be a bit different, but... The actual algorithm you can port to C++ or C Sharp and basically keep everything the same. Maybe this might also have to, you might have to get the length a slightly different way. But thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you got a request, leave it in the comments and subscribe if you want more tutorials. Adios.